So I came into the basement at work, well, one of my jobs, one of my works, and there was beeping. This time it was not a battery at the Symmetra LX battery pack. It was a power module. We were down to now two power modules and I've been able to get us up back to four, although one of them has a bad fan. Now, it just so happens that a few days ago, somebody who runs one of the biggest battery backup companies and organizations in the US sent me their manual. Now, they told me that they'd rather not share it, but if you need to contact them, go, go, go ask them or look at their website or whatever, because maybe you could strike a deal. But I've been working to reverse engineer and redo the power modules and we've run ourselves into an interesting situation. We were down to two and this one had a bad fan. I found this one and this one still were good. There was no error codes, everything checked out fine, except for this one. This one had a bad fan. I think that was causing a lot of the errors, overheating and such. So I took that out and I swapped the fan. I'm going to look at repairing these fans because the electronics work fine. It's just the bearings that get cooked. You know, it's not too hard to open them up. But we have an interesting situation. So let me, let me pull up my phone. This is the error code for the ones that were bad. This is the error codes for the ones that are good. You have status, fault. Those four numbers, those four numbers, it seems. And then that seemed pretty common throughout, but then I came into one that had this. It's all zeros. And it says no communication with MIM. So that was this one. And I decided you know, data comes in through here, comes in through this, comes into this card that goes right here. So I took that card out and that's there. That's the one that's reading zeros. Now I, I took out one of the ones that had a fault and I put it in and that same exact fault, the 8100 fault came up. Now this card actually has a capacitor Put onto it. I actually bumped the capacitor and broke it off and had to solder it back on. So somebody's been tampering with that one and maybe the capacitors are bad. Well, we have this one. This one is good. It's just the fan is a little bit slow. I, you can tell from the fluorescent lights that it's not running at the right speed. So I don't want that one to be in service too much. So let's take this, which this side, Let's take this control circuit out. Let's disconnect the fan. Let's take this card, this communication card, and put it into this one. Now this one was working fine with no faults. This is the chassis that had no communication. And when I put the faulty card in, from this one, it showed those faults. So this could be a good A-B comparison. Bad communication, fault, no fault. So let's see what happens. Okay, so this looks like it's been replaced. Yeah, so these have actually been replaced. This has been recapped. It was this C11. That's what was replaced on the other one. So the capacitors might go. That, that might be something that's common. That's interesting, this isn't socketed. The other ones are socketed. Hmm. Okay. Before you put it in, you wanna hook up the power switch first. The fan, the fan does not have any diagnostic pins or pulse with modulation or anything. So that's why it can be f bad and it doesn't make an error message. Okay, 
Now I'm just, I'm not gonna bother putting these little brackets back in, just for the test. That'll just be for later. All right, and. It's funny, I had, I've, I've had a few viewers comment on my, my Symmetra LX battery repair videos, and they've commented that only a fool would try to re repair these, that it's dangerous and you should just buy new. They clearly have not had to pay for these things bought as a replacement. They are expensive. They gouge, they price gouge like crazy. It is highway robbery. Okay, let's put this in. Going in bay three. Okay, good. Ooh, very nice. Now, let's see. Escape. Down, 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 down. Diagnostics. Power modules. We are on three. On and okay, raw status data. Ooh, look at that, no faults. Okay, so that means, that means that the 8000 and the 8100 fault has to do with this card. So we have one card that has no communication. It's mute, it will not talk. And we have another card that has faults, the 8100 fault. And that one is fixed by replacing the board. And when you move this to another to another chassis, it brings all those problems with it it seems. So, we don't have to worry about replacing big capacitors. Oh yeah, here we go. 8100. So the 8100 fault seems to be something to do with this. Now, if we take this board and put it into this bad power supply, will we get the zero, 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 zero? Just no communication. Let's try. Okay, now we have not a perfect test because it doesn't have a fan. I'm curious to see if it'll give an issue with the fan, but Let's see, this was the 8100. So let's see if it gives 8100, or if it gives the no communication that the board gave when it was in the other one. I'm just waiting for this thing to like explode with sparks and burn my hand. Oh, it's not my What's that mean? Fault five. So it's number three. One, two, three. It's blinking red light. I didn't even know there was not a light there. Hmm, that might be another fault that I don't know about. No calm with Mim, look at that. Same thing. So it is that board. Okay, so. So we successfully transported this error code doesn't go with the chassis. It goes with this. So this circuit board causes that. Now, can we get this one inside of this chassis to stop giving the zeros? 
backing out of all that. Also, oh, it's not, it's not blinking anymore. Hmm. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to disconnect this one. Notice that whenever you disconnect it, the time goes up. So it seems that each power supply takes a little bit of power, or at least it estimates it to take it. After all, we're not running a whole lot of stuff on this. Okay, guys. It's hard to do one-handed. Okay, so we have one, two, three. And fourth one. One. Okay. Let's just try swapping them. Let's put this one back in. This is the one that had zeros, but with the CPU or the chip or whatever, from the one that had the 8100 code. Okay, so it's probably not the CPU or whatever that is. It's probably something on the board, such as capacitors. Well, we are doing a good tr process of elimination. All right, so it seems that the issue is not with the unobtainable CPU. Well, I mean, maybe it's obtainable, actually. It'd, it'd be funny if that was easy to get. The issue seems to be with all of the components around it on this board. Are these? I don't know what those are. They're blue on this one, different manufacturer. Same manufacturer of capacitors. This one has been replaced. Now why did they replace that? In fact, all of these capacitors look messed up. This one looks like it's been reflown. Reflowed, reflown, whatever. Yeah, those have had flux on them, or at least flux has come out. I had to heat up that pad. Somebody had put flux on it. This capacitor is wobbly. Looks like it's actually been hit. That may be my doing. That can be replaced. Yeah, I'm going to say these capacitors look suspect. Sorry, my hands are dirty. Anytime you're dealing with anything that flows air, you're going to get so much of that soot. It's not soot, but it's like soot. Okay. Well, we have a commonality here. I think the one with the best chance of being fixed with just replacing the capacitors is this one. This one not giving any signals, that might be down to a bad connection somewhere. And probably not a capacitor connection, but maybe a MOSFET or something. So that's where I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with my next troubleshooting, but I just wanted to let you guys know that I did that much experimenting and I found it to be this. 
right on camera. I, that, that's, it's kind of live troubleshooting. I hope you guys enjoy this video and I hope you find this info, inform, uh, this information helpful. Thank you very much for watching. See ya.